What's up and what's good YouTube? It's your girl Saffron Heard and welcome to or back to my YouTube channel on this side of the lovely website. And I'm not going to waste any more time because I know you guys want to get into this lovely advice that I have on my iPad and so do I. So let's get started. Mmm. You taste that? Because I taste some fresh meat. Kids that had pennies thrown at them, kids that um, entered high school from 8th grade have spent 5 years in elementary school. Yeah, those kids are called freshmen. And as freshmen, some of y'all, and yes I say some of y'all, let me be fair, some of y'all come in knowing what to expect and some of y'all come in like this. Oh, what am I gonna mess up today? I'm talking about you. Do not do that. Here's the first piece of advice. Stick to the flow, read the room, realize the flow. The flow hasn't changed because you came here and it's certainly not gonna change because you're here now. So get that out your head quickly. Instead, you should be focused on these. You realize these? You recognize them? Yeah, these are report cards and on report cards is grades. And you can get these kind of grades if you stay on your A game. Staying on your A game, getting good grades, decent grades, whatever you can accomplish, just doing your best because that's what you're in school for. Sorry to say that, sorry to burst your bubble, but that's what school is for. If you want to socialize and do other whack, like stupid stuff that you do that outside of school. But in school, you're here to learn. That's just what it is. That's what school has been made for, honey boo boo. You need to know some of your teachers. I'm telling you, some of these teachers that you have are going to stick around in your high school for the next three years. So why not try to get to know them? Because you can get some perks. And no, I'm not just talking about rec letters. I'm talking about a whole plethora of things that they can offer. That's what I'm saying because I've gotten like a lot of perks from a lot of the teachers that I've known and I wouldn't say befriend but have been nice to them. They've been nice to me. Let's not get that twisted. But that's just the kind of energy that's been reflected in the person that I've gotten from these actions. It pays off. Trust me. There's no need in making enemies in teachers because why? Unless they did you wrong, of course. The sooner you recognize your schedule and figure out your combination in your locker, the better your life will be. Usually schools, they give you one week, maybe two and a half weeks to know this information and then after that you should have this in printed in your head, but why not surprise everybody and get this done three days, four days, two days, or maybe for the few few that day. I mean, I probably got the memo on the third day, the third or the second day. And that's because I knew that if I didn't get it, then things are just gonna be bound to mess up. I was gonna get confused. I was just gonna have like straight up panic attacks if I didn't get to my class or da 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 da. It's good to know. From my personal experience, this usually comes from orientation. They give you a tour, you get to go to your classes, and from there you can sort of like get an idea in your head on how to create your own ninja route is what I like to call it. Ninja routes is basically your own special way to getting from point A to point B to point C, basically to all your classes so that way you can weave through the crowd and not, you know, end up late or just stumbling or fumbling or something like that. It's really helpful. I've created multiple ninja routes because there are three top, like three levels to my school. Some of my classes were like on the second level. I probably had one up here, probably one in the basement, but I had to figure out how to get to those because there were some spaces that were blocked off from others to where I couldn't get to the other side of the school, but I knew in my head that there were other parts of the school, like staircases and stuff that I could use to get to one class to another. You get what I'm saying? Recognizing your true friend. A lot of the people that you came to high school with probably don't mess with you because, like I said, a lot of y'all get bloated heads. If flatuated egos can be the death of you and it can be the death of some of these um, friendships and relationships and la da 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 So, even if you have to make new friends, make new connections or whatever, that's okay because there's always going to be falling out when it comes to people. That's just how life is. People's opinions change and all this other stuff, so it's okay. I made like new friends in high school during freshman year. In fact, there was one girl that has still, to this day, been my very, very good friend. Shout out to you if you're watching this video. And of course, I've had friends from like elementary and middle school that have came to my high school, but we're not as close. More so, like, y'all might hate this word, but associates. I see them around, we say hi, we're cool, but we're just not like this, like clung together, like best friends, friends, my <laughs> homies and stuff like that. You can also find it in the upperclassmen, I promise. We don't bite, we don't do swirlies, we don't give you wedgies, we don't slam you into lockers. We're more so just a chill bunch, unless you mess with the flow, as I said, because we got places to go. If you recognize that, then we're cool. I made, like freshman year, I made a couple of upperclass friends that we was cool with, mostly through theater, and when I was still in theater, junior and senior year, I still made underclass friends. So, they knew that I was cool, they described me as sweet, and yeah. There's really not much to say about that. 
but you can take on a lot if you do too much taking in all these activities and clubs and all that stuff you don't have to do all that your freshman year you can take a club or an activity but you shouldn't really do all that because you're getting acclimated to high school last so why would you just clump all of those activities together and this is going to come again in the junior section so juniors stay tuned this is going to come again but it'll be more lucrative but for freshmen don't push all that on you trust me it's not a good look you're going to get your little head stressed out and it's just ugh. okay woohoo congratulations you freaking softies you made it through your first year you're moving on up and you're classified as an upperclassman but <laughs> With upperclassmen powers comes upperclassmen responsibilities. And one of those is keeping a level head and some freaking common sense. So do not walk around the school as if your stuff don't stink, as if you weren't in the freshman's place, what, three to four months ago, like in May or June. So watch that. Nobody likes a snooty snot. But one thing that you can march around and keep a high primper profile on is with AP classes because this is actually the perfect time to get into AP classes because there's not as much um, strain or weight on you. And I like to describe this as not being under the adult spotlight. And being under the adult spotlight goes like this. Freshman year, they're trying to get them kids acclimated to high school so that way they don't fall off juniors they're trying to prepare them for all these freaking tests sat act you name it it's seniors they're trying to get our butts out of here and graduated so that just leaves you guys with nobody's hands on your shoulders so why not just take advantage of this and just let your little wings fly with them activities and clubs and of course ap classes trust me need a reference here's a video that i made concerning ap and dual enrollment just ignore the dual enrollment part you don't need to worry about that because dual enrollment probably isn't available to you sophomores mostly available for juniors and seniors now this last one might sound a little bit crass but it's totally my opinion this might be the year that you guys come out of your shell for all my shy people your shell might break you might blossom and bloom into a lovely little flower and that's because if you have surrounded yourself around good people and have joint activities that you love you might branch out and join activities that you never thought that you would actually join or get to talking to people if you're like anti-social like <laughs> me still working on it this might happen and it's because for one, you're in the peak of puberty, which is like 15, 16. Yeah, 15, 16 is what I categorize as like the peak of puberty because 14, 13, you're still pretty young. And then 17, 18, you just, I don't want to say old, but some people just gonna call us old as a joke. 15, 16, the peak of puberty. All those hormones and stuff flowing through your body like butter. You're gonna feel like you want to do new things. You're gonna feel like, oh, I want to join this activity. I've probably never done it before. Like, you probably want to do a sport, stuff like that. Talk to somebody that you feel like you could talk to and you just talk to them. Like, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. See, it's that one year where you're almost there. You're almost at the finish line, but it's also that year where crap hits the fan. Yes, juniors, I'm talking about you. Now let's get to your tape. SAT, any type of testing, just take it with stride. I'm not saying take it seriously because honestly, 30 years from now, SAT, ACT scores might not mean anything, but at the same time, we're still in 2022 and they still take that seriously in most colleges. So just take it with stride, build like a study plan, take a practice test at home because they do offer like in some schools offer practice tests, but sometimes you just don't want to do it through them. You just want to do it by yourself. So find one on the internet. Trust me, there's plenty in the math and the reading and science or whatever. They're there. Same could go for ACTs. I don't know if some schools do it, but apparently they do, because, hmm, not me. ACT still applies too. Can't believe I'm saying this, but juniors, you have something in common with a freshman, and that's the fact that you do not want to overflow your schedule with activities, etc., etc. Literally, you're about to test, so why in the heck would you stress yourself out with one study and then planning to attend three clubs? Like, no, that's not gonna work, my love. And calling back to making it to the finish line, you're going to get reminded of that a lot when these talks come of what is expected and what's not expected when becoming a senior. It just seems that every adult in the school just automatically thinks of you as a senior, as if you ain't got these tests on deck. You're now treating them as if they're supposed to be some type of role model because that's basically what they expect you to do. They expect you to be a role model like the seniors to the other kids and it's just like, I got too much going on and now you want me to be a role model to these kids? I think not, but be prepared for those kind of talks about what they want you to do, about what they expect from you, etc., etc. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, it's boring, but hey, it's gonna happen to some of y'all, right? Don't wanna stress y'all out, but you guys should have at least some thin foundation of what you wanna do for the future. I'm going to say this, it doesn't have to be all college. You can do trade, you can do community college. You just have to have some type of future plan or endeavor or something. You can't just leave it 
out here and honestly i would have said like earlier that you should start thinking about it and start planning a little bit during sophomore year but y'all would have dragged me through the comments had i done that y'all would have called me oh you freaking overachiever and i ain't got time for that so just do it junior year and just save yourself save your comments is what i'm trying to say and finally, the last tier of the school, but not the last portion of this video, the seniors, aka me, aka my friends, aka the class of 20 freaking two. We finally made it three years in that same school with the same drama and the same everything. We finally made it, but keep on your A game, keep on your A game. Senioritis is a real thing. It can hit you and pack you a punch. For some people, it's right then and there. For some people, it comes in the middle of the year. And for people like myself, it comes towards the end of the year. Senioritis hit me hard, and I'm not gonna lie, I got a little lazy. I really did, but look, I got all my credits, I graduated on time, and I'm not that lazy to the point where I'm gonna be finishing out my senior year in summer school and stuff. No disrespect to anybody who does, but that's what's gonna happen if your senior writer just overtakes you. For the love of everything, make them deadlines. Make the deadline to get your prom tickets, make the deadline for your senior trips, your senior activities. From experience, from knowing someone who was in charge of all that, she was literally about to blow a casket every single time a kid came, yo, can I get a prom contract? Yo, can I pay for Six Flags? And it was close to the deadline or it was already past the deadline. But all that time before the deadline, crickets. Where the heck were you at to get your ticket? And I get it. Some people cannot get money and stuff like that. I get it, but no, in fact, screw that. If you were able to get cash money to go to the gas station, then you're really telling me you couldn't get like 75 or 60 for like six flags or something like that. You couldn't have went to the ATM and remember to do that if you really wanted to go to this trip that badly. Are you serious? See, mm, you didn't want to go if that was the case. So yeah, make them deadlines, make their jobs easier. Please, it'll save you a lot of trouble and a whole list. A lot of yelling. <laughs> as grown as y'all claim to be, act like it. Do not claim grown, but you're still doing childish stuff in the school. And I'm going to get to it when I get to my general advice. Like, some of the seniors that's in my class want to claim grown and do grown stuff, but then when stuff hits the fan, you'll want to run back and become a minor all of a sudden. Like, you're 18 one minute and then you're 17, 16. Another. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. And then even 17 year olds that are seniors, they be on some grown stuff too. They already have this grown mentality and they haven't even reached 18. But then the minute you reach 18, you're hoping to be a minor again. Like that's not how it works. Have some freaking maturity people. Come on, it's not that hard. Ooh, it's getting a little bit too hard in here. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the finale. Every piece of advice from here on out is for all tiers. Whether you're a freshman, junior, senior, it applies to everybody, okay? First off, no drama, no fights. Especially in this day and age with the internet, someone can easily snap a picture of you or a video and that's forever on the internet. There's no erasing it, there's no going back. So do you really want to taint your um, record like that? I think not, because background checks is real. They see that stuff, they're gonna be like, <coughs> no, next. Is that what you want? No, I don't think so. So think about that when you try and get into a fight with a little girl that says something about you during fourth period English or a boy that wanted to pick a fight with you just right then and there or just like anybody in general that just want to try you on one because it's so freaking hot. But think about it. Politics and homecoming and prom court do not mix. Do not treat this as a political game. It is not a political game. It is a fun game. To campaign, to have fun, to be king, queen, princess, duchess, whatever for homecoming and prom. If you take it that seriously to the point where you feel like a blood vein is about to pop, then maybe you shouldn't um, join. Simple as that. I mean, I have fun doing mine. Granted, I got a little bit stressed because of the process of just getting my stuff in. But then again, I wasn't mean in any sort of type of way towards my competition. I wasn't trying to taint them or spread rumors or anything because it's not that freaking deep. Chances are people are probably not going to remember that I was senior princess five freaking years from now. You see what I'm, you get what I'm saying? This is all supposed to be fun, people. All supposed to be fun. Parents, guardians, you're probably going to get mad at me for this, but y'all probably have done this at work, so you know it is the truth. If you are late, there is no point in rushing. Say it again. If you are late, there is no point in rushing. Freshman me would beg to differ. She would probably be like, but you got to get to class every day. Well, now as a senior, I'm just like, oh, I'm late. That's just that. Get your pass. Go get some gas in your car. Get some breakfast. Like, you're already late. There's no point in rushing. And chances are, even if you get to that classroom, they're going to be like, um, where's your pass? And then you're going to have to go out into the hallway anyway, so. I should have mentioned this before with the freshmen, but I think this applies to everybody because I see people in my grade, seniors do this. Get on 
a good foot and get out the freaking way. If you want to talk to your friends and waste your time, that's cool. That is none of my business. You are not my child or related to me or anything we ain't friends or anything. But move the heck out of the way. And ooh, don't, especially don't do this in a crowded hallway or on a freaking staircase. I heard that kids in my school legit be making TikToks like in the middle of the stairs. Like, what are you doing? Like, first of all, get your butt to class. And second off, even if you are going to waste time to make a TikTok, make it in an open space. And then they have the audacity to get mad. It's like, I swear, nothing angers anybody more than when you're in their way when they're trying to get to class or just get to a specific location. When you're just seeing a whole bunch of kids in crowds in bundles and then you try and brush past them and then they be giving you an attitude. Then you should have moved out the way. Why are you like in a bundle in a pack? Like what the heck? Be a pack somewhere on the side. I ain't having it. And last and certainly not least, preserve those memories. I know there's gonna be good memories, there's gonna be bad memories. Some of you guys might just straight up say, oh, I hate high school, let this whole place burn down. But that's just in spite. Believe me, I've had those moments where I felt like I just really didn't like high school and I just wish that it was over. But I knew in my heart that there were some good times. I had a lot of good times freshman year, sophomore year, despite a cut out it. Hmm, excuse me. Had a cough. Despite like everything senior year, I still had good times. But if you allow the bad to overweigh the good, then you're obviously gonna naturally be miserable. And who in the heck wants to constantly be miserable? You see what I'm saying? Preserve them through a picture, preserve them through video, snaps. I have a whole bunch of snaps and videos. I have like whole printouts and stuff from like um Spirit Week from Homecoming, from when I did concessions for the Homecoming dance. And I have videos of like the um activities that they did for Shoot, what the heck is it called? For, oh yeah, there we go, the pep rally. I have so many videos and stuff of that and I will forever cherish them because they were the good parts of high school for me and I wouldn't give anything, how hard it is, but I wouldn't give them up for the world. I wouldn't give those memories up and I wouldn't doubt having those memories with the people surrounding me and the memories that I made. And boom, that's case in point. And ooh, let's hurry up before I start sweating up a mess. But hopefully you guys love the advice that I put out. I try my best to make this as original as possible than what other videos have been put out. But it might sound similar, but hey, at least you could say that I tried. And at least you could say that I put some humor in it, right? But don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, a sweet, sweet comment, subscribe, and absolutely turn on the post notifications so you know when I upload and when to watch to your pleasing. But until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.